Hey Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs post-game show podcast. Luke Stuckmeyer and Cody Del Mendo live from the Belly Bar. Let's go! The Belly Bar. A series Let's win go! Over the Brewers. I can't believe they won the game after they almost How won. about that? Cody Let's Bellinger, go. back-to-back games, the game-winning hit, and the professor delivers a gem at Wrigley Field at a 120 start. How about this? We got the Rice Krispies Rally Treats. You want to know what we're talking about? We're going to tell you. Cody's got the beer bat with the 3 one lined up and raring to go, baby. The Cubs are within three games of first place. That was a crucial series win in the hunt for a division title, Cody. Absolutely, Luke. Uh, dude, uh, I'm, I am once again sorry that I... Gave up on Kyle Hendricks ah, once again. I'm dude, taking receipts. Shows shows up shows up in the biggest game of the year. Delivers a gym. The only run against him was was actually his own fault uh, from a throwing error. Uh, but other than that, he was absolutely incredible today. Uh, the offense scored early. I was hoping maybe they'd tack on a few more, but Brandon Woodruff settled in after that first inning. Doesn't matter because Kyle Hendricks goes out there. Doesn't matter what the score is. Doesn't matter what the pressure situation it doesn't matter that uh this game has huge implications for the nl central title it doesn't matter because mm-hmm. kyle hendricks doesn't care his face literally will tell you that he doesn't care and he goes out there gives you six strong julian merriweather comes in shoves it down their throats did you know that he was picked up off waivers if you didn't know now you do know all right all right lighter wasn't that great today he the walks hurt him but you know what happens what? Abbott came in. He hit a guy. They tie the game. Fine. But he still got out of the inning without giving up the lead. And then he comes back out. Or And then the Cubs score. Uh, it was almost like the Bellinger hit was the exact same type of ball <laughs> that ha- that hit steel. Like the way that it, yeah. it, the way that it ricocheted uh, last night, right? And listen, put the ball in play. Good things happen. That's what we've talked about all season. Putting the ball in play, that was something that last year's team was so bad out. So so many of those teams in the golden era, at the back end of it, 2019, especially in the second half, 2020, 2021, those teams were awful at putting the ball in play when you absolutely needed to. He picked up Ian Happ by just putting the ball in play, and baseball savant said it had a 370 expected batting average, so I assume that ball was going up the middle if it didn't hit the, hit the pitcher or whatever. They score a run. They, the Brewers do not get the all-important shutdown inning. And then Abbott comes back out there. It has a one, well, almost basically a one, two, three inning. Allows, I think he allowed a hit. Or no, it was a throwing error on uh, Bellinger or whatever. Yeah. Gets the double play on Yelich. I'm screaming in the office. And we're singing Go Cubs Go after he gets Cody the final. Cody just out. recapped the whole game for us. He's so fired up he just went through the whole game. We don't I, even I need to cancel you. the post-game show. <laughs> It was just no, it was so that. exciting. It was don't so exciting. So exciting. Let's get to the important stuff, Cody. The important stuff. The game is tied up, and I announced it's time to go get a Rally Rice Krispie treat. You did. You did I went that. over, went to the cabinet, got a Rice Krispie treat. Hello to the people at Rice Krispies and Kellogg's. You might want to sponsor us because this is free advertisement placing. That's right. Went over, had a Rice Krispie treat. Then Cody said, I better go get one too. So we sat there on the couch, and as we're finishing our Rice Krispie treats, Cody Bellinger drives in the go-ahead run. Coincidence? I think not. Credit to us. Pour some sugar on me, baby. A little Rice Krispie treat never hurt anybody. Now Cody's going to do the beer bat. Everybody wants to know how long is it going to take. I guarantee you one thing, after you have a Rice Krispie treat, that beer goes down a little bit faster. I will say that that is true. 
Facts. Could go down a little bit faster. I see our friend Corey Friedman is vibing with us. Corey, feel free to uh, dial in on the hotline if you want to really have a comment here in the show. Um, Jack R. said earlier in the show, Hendricks is just a big game pitcher. It's what I tried to tell you in the pregame show that we didn't expect to have, but then we did. Yeah. I, I, listen, had, no, I, I had no worries about Kyle Hendricks in this game. That is who he is. Yep. And I know we've seen some bad starts over the last few years. But since he's come back from this injury, Kyle Hendricks has been the second best pitcher on the Cubs rotation with Stroman out. It's not even close. It's not he's, close. He's been outstanding. They even put up the expected batting average from opponents against one pitch, and they're like, well, the changeup. When he's got it, Kyle Hendricks is as good as anybody, and I'll take him. I, I don't care how big of a game it is. Game seven in the World Series, Kyle Hendricks is my guy. Big, crucial game three rubber game of a series against the Brewers that you can't afford to lose, I'll take Kyle Hendricks on the mound. He goes out. You can't make him nervous. You can't do it. He's just that guy. He there, that are, guy. There, are, there are athletes out there in every sport, and Kyle Hendricks is one of them. Yeah, He's man. just, as the kids say, a dog at times. He, he doesn't look like it. <laughs> he doesn't look like a dog. He doesn't bark like a dog. But I'll tell you one thing. He'll bite you like a dog if you don't respect him. Yeah. He just comes through. When you need him most, he comes through and gives you his best effort and delivers. He delivered today. The way he was moving the the, the pitches, dotting the corners, he was painting the, the, the outside of that strike zone all day, getting weak contact and made some hitters look real silly a few times. Like, it was vintage Kyle Hendricks. Like, we've said that a few times. Probably the most vintage we've seen of him this year was that start in San Francisco where he almost had the mm -hmm. no-hitter. Yep. But when you talk about the situation going into the game, the division standings and all of that, that was that was the start of the year for him, for sure. He delivered in a, on a day the Cubs needed it. If only the Cubs' offense would have helped him out a little bit more and he would have got a win today. Instead, he gets a no That's decision. That's right. That's but, all right. He doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't. He care. doesn't care. Besides, you but told me last night win. wins don't count anyways. He deserves and uh, win Pat anyway. Hunt in the chat says a very enjoyable 120 lecture from the professor oh, today. Yeah. Class Loved was it. in session and it was dismissed after six innings. Class maybe. dismissed and back to Wisconsin. Back to Wisconsin. Back you go. <laughs> yeah, no, he's. Cubs within three of first place. Three games back. We stay in that second spot firmly and the wild card. The vibes are immaculate going into an off day, Luke. All right, here we go. All right. What are the odds uh, Cody does this baby in under 10 seconds? Ron is calling for 10 flat. Uh, I think I saw Barb calling for less than that. I'm going to see if I can eat my Rice Krispie treat faster than Cody can <laughs> chug the beer. This he, is now, this is, it went from a rally Rice Krispie treat to a celebratory Rice Krispie treat. We need, okay. a, we need a timer, though. We well, don't have a timer on this thing, so here, oh, do, do you want me? Oh, I'm in charge of that. Yeah. I, I do the oh. timer. Right? We're in Studio we... B, so we don't have a timer on this one. Oh, crap. I've got, I've got it here. Did don't we, worry. Did we explain what the Rice Krispies were? I can't remember. I did, yes. Oh, you did? Okay. I said, I'm getting a little nervous. It's time for a Rally Rice Krispie After tree. they tied it. After right? they tied the timer it. Too. In yep. a miserable way of tying it. Now mm -hmm. Dylan's saying eight flat. I went over to the cabinet. We occasionally have a stock of Rice Krispie treats in the we first do. cabinet in our kitchen here at CHGO. Went over, there they were. And I, Cody saw me do it. He was inspired. Mm -hmm. He went over, and we doubled down on the sugar. I we didn't doubled have one. down on two. the Rice Krispies. <laughs> yeah. You had two? I had two. <laughs> oh, well, then I'm just catching up here. All right, let's go. Now, Cody's going to do his dedication. I'll do my crispy dedication. Yeah. All right. This, uh, this beer bat is uh, for the man, the myth, the legend, Kyle Hendricks, man. We He's are an in. absolute dog. I we said it all already. The, this guy should be a cub for life. If of the last guy from 2016, if you should don't should retire as a cub. Retire a cub. You, you know should. another guy? My dedication, Cody Bellinger, should also retire as a cub because we are in the belly bar for the beer bat. This isn't Studio B anymore. Now it's called the belly bar. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm so ready. as soon as the beer hits your lips, oh, you, Sarah's got the timer. All right. When the, when the beer hits his lips, all right. All right, here we, here go. we go. Here we go. I'm going to close it now. Oh, he's going to crush me on this. I can't get this down to hell. Done. 
I have 12.63. Uh, I'm still going on Rice Krispie Treat. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, yeah. It was really 12.63. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, Ed- Edward. <laughs> oh, my God. Cody almost vomited. Uh, no, I just, that one was really mm. cold. Mm. <laughs> oh that wind tastes sweet. Oh, my God. Mm. I, w- I mean, I also, my I've had a scratchy throat this week. It's just been hard to swallow. That's what she said. Um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Adam says I got to go one bite on a Rice Krispie treat. I can't do that. I just had one earlier. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. So the Rice Krispie treat game. The, ra- the Rice Krispie rally treats the, the are rally one and The Rice Krispies. That's what we call them, right? You know, what I, you know what we need to have? A T-shirt made. Where were you when the Rice, Crisp- Rice Krispie treats saved the season? Where were you when the rice? When the rally rice krispies saved, saved the season? Where saved were you? The season, god dang. Craig suggests warm <sighs> beer because it's easier to chug. So what was it? Twelve something. Twelve something. Twelve point six three. Charlie's uh, dedication goes to Adbert. We finally have a closer that is elite. I mean, outside of the hit by pitch, yeah, he didn't let that bother him. I think that's the the the. Like the important thing about that that happened, then he got Terang to fly out to Talkman. So Shane's got COVID in Vegas. Hope you're feeling better. Feel better, Shane. Mark says don't choke, right? The the only thing worse than that would have been celebrating in the belly bar and then choking. <laughs> yeah. So Woo, I'm sugared yeah. up for the drive home. I was like again, what, that's like sixteen saves or something? I don't I've lost count, man. <laughs> Has the most saves in baseball since the all star break. Um he's just He's been great. I, I think there's been times where you can you can get a little anxious with him, but you know, last night especially I, I was a little anxious, but I think it was just because it was a one nothing game. Three two game today. Um but after he got the double play, I felt pretty confident about getting that final out. To get Yelich to ground out too. I mean, that's chef's kiss, man. That's chef's kiss. Yeah, Craig says, is there anything prettier than a Nico to Dansby double play? By the way, if you're yeah. listening to this in podcast form, make sure you check out the live YouTube shows. Subscribe to CHGO Sports uh, YouTube channel. Don't want to miss anything. It's the best way to get involved. You can hang out in the chat with all our good friends there. Um, oh, Shane's saying that you probably have COVID. Oh, because I said my because you had to go to scratchy. Vegas. Yeah, and because I went to well, Vegas. If that's the case, move over uh, and open the door. <laughs> I feel fine. Okay, no, he I, feels fine. I feel fine. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, to those of you that doubted Kyle Hendricks, I've told you, the people that said, he, there were a lot of people that said he's washed up, mm-hmm. DFA him, move mm-hmm. on. I said, the guy wasn't healthy. Just give him a, is he 2016 Kyle Hendricks? No. Is he your ace? No. But he can be an effective pitcher for you, and he can be a big game pitcher for you when you need him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, and um, he is. He is. He yeah. is. You gotta have him. You'll have him back. You have the option to have him back next year. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say this, and this isn't to defend that I had avig- that I had given up on him. And when I say that I given up, you can go find the audio from last off season going into this season. There were many times where I said that I just don't have a lot of confidence that that I that I don't know. Like I felt like the Cubs needed to get another starter because how can you rely on this guy? Will he be able to stay healthy? All this stuff. Um, you know, maybe the Cubs gambled a little bit on it, but it's worked out. And also it's kind of like this guy's been nothing but reliable for most of his entire career outside of, you know, some, some, some bad starts last season before, uh, hitting the injured list. And, and in 2021, he had some bad starts too, but overall throughout his career, he's been as consistent and reliable as any Cubs starter that we've seen out there, man. It's. I'm happy for him that he's been able to yes. be this good because we really had no expectations for him this year. And here he is at the end of August going into September pitching against Milwaukee in a crucial game to get the Cubs back to three games back of the division. Like, it's he's, he's different, man. He's, he's different. Corey said it in the chat, 383 earned run average in his last 15 starts. I was talking about it last night in the pregame. I just want three runs or less, which is what he's basically done mm-hmm. almost every single time out this season. Three runs or less puts you in the game. I'm not asking. I mean, he was 
even better than that today. You know, it's it's six with no earned runs. I think Kyle would tell you that the one run feels like an earned run to him because he made the error. Um, but regardless, six innings, one run on him. Man. Yeah. Against the Brewers, that's it. Nate says in the chat, just got back from beautiful historic Wrigley Field and the vibes are high. Dude, if you were at beautiful historic Wrigley Field the last 18 innings, congrats to you. I wish I had been there. But you were in the next best place. Right was here in the, in the belly bar. Place. Yes. The, the Sox guys are doing, see the Sox game ended early. We have two studios at CHGO. So the mm-hmm. Sox are getting the big studio because their game ended early and they have three people. Mm-hmm. And we've been relegated to Studio B, n- normally known as the Losers Lounge. But we have renamed it the Belly Bar because now back-to-back nights. Yes. Days. Well, look at this. Cody going for a third Rice Krispie treat. Credit to Cody for doing his job. That's right, Corey. Credit, Credit to, to Cody you. for taking down a third Rice Krispie <laughs> treat. Now one celebratory. The first two were rally treats. Yeah, you all get to see me eat now. What was it? The Angels that had the rally monkey were they the one the team that yeah. did the rally monkey? Rally I wanna, Rice Krispies. I want to see at at Wrigley Field the rally Rice Krispie <laughs> treats. There you go. Start throwing them around, baby. That one's for you, Sarah. <laughs> I figured as it hit the wall. <laughs> I actually tried to hit the camera and I came pretty pretty close. I'm glad you didn't because it might have fell. It might it might have it might have fell and then we would have been really fucked. Oh, we've been all right. <laughs> anyway. Um, what, a, what a game. And again, oh, Merriweather, we, by the way. Yeah, Merriweather. Can we talk about Nico's defense? Like how he, sa- he basically saved a run. He did with save keep, a run. With keeping a, the ball in the infield, uh, the one inning where it was two to one still, and they hit a ground ball up the middle with the guy on second, and – because and there was two outs, so if that ball gets through Nico or Damsy, Dansby, that guy probably scores, and it's a tie game. Then, instead, Nico he wasn't they didn't get make an out, but he kept it in the infield. So the guy that was on second he got to third, but he couldn't keep going. And then Hendr- Hendricks gets out of the inning after that. It was huge. It was a huge moment. Uh, a lot of people in the chat uh, joining in today. What are we? What up? What are you up to? Not a hundred likes yet. Like to see the likes, please. Barb says, don't forget that leap Madrigal would have made. We were, we were talking we were about la- that. I bit. laughed because nobody else would have had to reach above their waist for it. But, <laughs> but he, le- he leapt, they went up in the air, and he grabbed it. Uh, Rice Krispies are for life, Adam says. Just broke my screen trying to reach out for that. Mm-hmm. Goonies never die. <laughs> huh? I once, uh, I once uh, snuck a Rice Krispie treat into a ball game. Madrigal deserves def- or Madrigal's defense, too, credit to me, for always believing in him, Corey says. You know, Ryan, uh, Ryan would disagree. Corey, just Corey. call in already. <laughs> yeah, just call in. Jump on the ECAM, bro. <laughs> just ECAM that. Yeah. We're up to three ninety nine. Can we get one more? Four hundred. How about how about a troller? We'll take a troller for four hundred. Yeah, ninety eight. Uh, ninety eight likes. Where are all the trollers from the pregame show? Yeah, the pregame show. There's a lot of trolls. A lot of trollers. We had Cardinals fans and Brewers fans coming in for the trolling. They seem to have disappeared. Mm-hmm. Huh. Must Duh. be on their way back, stuck in traffic. Yeah. Our guy Mike Dub says, my favorite part was Adamus punching the grass after Nico robbed him of a hit and then couldn't do the same to Nico. <laughs> I do remember that, yeah. It is funny that it, you know the season started and we said, pitching will carry this team, specifically starting pitching, and we believed in the bullpen because we believe the Cubs can always figure out this group of front office guys can figure out a way to get a bullpen going sooner or later it may not be all season but eventually they figure out the bullpen thing with certain guys um and then there was a stretch where well tyone hasn't been good stroman was down stroman was off all of those things and we said well look at this the offense is the thing that's actually carrying the team and the question will be will they have enough pitching still might be the case but the last two games that you had to win against the Milwaukee Brewers after losing the first game of the series after the Tyone start, the starting pitching came through. Justin Steele, Kyle Hendricks, Merriweather, Alzali in the bullpen. Boom, boom, boom. It wasn't the offense. Sure enough, it was the pitching that delivered in the crucial moment for the Cubs to win two out of three. And I'll be honest with you, 
if you if you take the bad start out of Tyone, which I'm not I'm not saying you should do, but like at least he went six innings and saved the bullpen yes. so that they could be effective last night and today. So while I'm not going to give Tyone credit for much, I do give him credit for stretching that out, figuring out that he had to go off speed, throw in the breaking balls, and get it to six innings so he could save the bullpen. And that's what that's what a good teammate does. Yeah, You talk about the bad vibes at, that were going through the clubhouse on the other side of town. They're not that way on the north side of town. And a guy, even though he could have been dejected after the way the game started for him in game one of the series, Tyone sucked it up, got him to six innings, saved the bullpen, and lo and behold, that bullpen came through with crucial, crucial moments mm-hmm. in game two and three of this series, and the Cubs win both of them. Yeah. I see uh, our friend Corey Freeman has called in. Oh, he's, he, he actually he's called listened. in. He doesn't want to show us. No, no, he, he's he's there. Sarah's going to put him he on He is there. going to show us. There he there is. There he is. There Got he the 120 is. hat on. Wow, he's there. I don't know if we <laughs> have audio there. yet. You, you kept telling me to call in, so here I am. There he is. <laughs> I didn't think he'd actually were, do it. No, I'm kidding. Were you at beautiful that? historic Wrigley Field, Corey? You know it, dude. Got to be. How yeah. How was it? Yeah, it's incredible. The vibes between I mean, last night and today, how were they? Incredible. I mean, and it was incredible, you know, before the game, the air got sucked out, obviously, on Monday pretty quickly, but the vibe was great. I mean, the crowd was into it, and, you know, it's classic Wrigley Field stuff. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's the first inning, the second inning, as soon as there's two strikes, big inning, you know, high leverage moment, a turning point, as Pat Hughes would say, crowds up, crowds making noise. Um just, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where when you hear guys like Justin Steele talk about how much they love playing at Wrigley Field and things like that, like, they're, they're not kidding. You know, I think some teams will say that about their fans and their ballpark, and maybe it's maybe that them just being nice. But, like, this is – it's a really special environment. It's a great few days here at Wrigley Field. How many different ways do we have to say this before hopefully somebody with the correct set of ears hears this at Wrigley Field? Sign Cody Bellinger. (laughs) I don't care if you have to overpay him. You're going to have to overpay him. Overpay Cody Bellinger. The Cubs don't win this series without him. Yes, it was a ground ball in game two. And yes, it was a line drive. I don't care how he got it done. The man with two strikes is spectacular. The man in the field is spectacular. And we will talk prospects in the second segment. But guys, Cody Bellinger... He's an MVP-type player. Yep. And they knew that they could possibly rejuvenate that this offseason when they signed with a one-year deal, which a lot of people laughed at. A lot of people say, you're going to pay Cody Bellinger. What have you seen? Is Have you seen what he's hit the last two years? Have you, have you seen how bad he's been? He's been the worst hitter in baseball the last... Okay, he was hurt. Yep. What do you think of him now? I'll tell you what I think of him. He's a perfect fit at first base. Has nothing to do with Matt Mervis. He's also a perfect fit in center field. Has nothing to do with PCA. I can still find a spot for both those guys. If PCA wants to come play center field and you want to put Bellinger at first, fine. If if you think Bellinger's better in center and you want to move PCA to one, one of the other spots, that's okay. I don't care how you do it. I want good players piled up on the team. And I don't see how on this team that is now competing for a division title, and also a wild card spot as a backup plan. I don't see how you can take that team, build the momentum you have, and then let Cody Bellinger, your best player, walk away in the offseason. So I don't want to get too into the offseason thing. All I'm saying is, whatever the guy wants and his crazy-ass agent, pay him. Pay him the money. Give him the money and take it. These last two games, you saw he gave you the pieces of hitting. You know, he's he's been the big hitter all season, but he gave you those little pieces of hitting, right? The situational hitting with two strikes uh, to get the run in, hitting the ball to the right side last night. And then tonight, you know, it hits the pitcher, but like, okay, whatever. Like, he hit the ball hard. Like, that's what you need him to do in that situation. And you need somebody to come through, right? Like, we've debated who should be hitting there, who you want in those big moments. You know he's going to hit the homers. He's going to slug, but like – these last couple of nights, those are impressive pieces of hitting. And he continues to just be so impressive with two strikes on it, man. Like, that's the thing. For a guy that, you know, obviously his K rate is so much lower, but for a guy who had that kind of reputation, 
with his down seasons with the Dodgers, for him to do that and be such a prolific hitter with two strikes and two outs and those tough situations. I mean, yeah, I'm with you, Luke. Whatever you got to do, he's got to stay here. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I would say that when they signed him last offseason, I was probably the one most optimistic, big of me. And maybe I'm wrong, but I do feel that way because I think I said something in the Slack about how the people were asking for an emergency pod about the signing, and you all were like, eh? And I was like, well, the people want it, and I'm kind of hyped about it. So, just saying. I, I don't remember that, but I don't remember I remember I ate things. For lunch I'm a big grudge guy, so if you didn't know, Luke. If you didn't know. Well, but, we know you're a grudge guy. <laughs> anyway, not Cody. the point. Uh, yeah, no. They, Cody Bellinger needs to be here, man. And I've been, I've been saying that for months before the deadline. Like, it made so much it makes so much sense to have to to have him here long term. Uh Sean in the chat says nobody more humble than Del Madrigal. <laughs> Listen, uh, a lot of I'm people not in the a chat Madrigal hater. I've literally given the guy credit, but whatever. I know. A lot of people <laughs> a lot of people in the chat asking about Giolito and waivers. Uh Corey, uh, we didn't get your thoughts on that. What do you think about Giolito or any of the other guys they could have put a waiver claim in on? Yeah, I mean, I think Lopez is another one, Me too. Um, you know, that would be really interesting out of that bullpen. Yeah, I'm for it. I mean, look, like, you know, it's obviously going to be a project. You're going to have to tinker a little bit, but you need pitching. Um, we've seen that, you know, the Cubs have had a lot of guys step up, but you're still heading into September asking some young, inexperienced guys to pitch some really major, major innings uh, and starts and games for this team. And that's not super reliable. And, you know, is... Uh, Lucas Giolito right now, no, but he's got swing and miss stuff that's in there. You get him with Tommy Hadovy and see what you can crank out, and you just need reinforcements, I think. But I think I'm sure, as you guys discussed and other people have discussed, like it's it's tough with the teams that are ahead of them in that waiver um, priority list, and you kind of have to hope that they get there. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, you're heading into a, a pennant race, and I think we saw it these last couple days, right? Like. We know at this point that that kind of three-headed monster out of the bullpen can handle close games and high leverage innings, but you saw it today, right? If you, you ask them to come in every day, you know, they can't be perfect every day. Letter Jr. wasn't great today, didn't have that split finger that he normally has, but he was great last night, you know? So if you can get one more guy, and it doesn't have to come from outside the organization, but, uh, you know, maybe it's Luke Little, maybe it's Daniel Palencia with a little more seasoning, right? You need, I think, one more guy who you can really, truly trust in those high leverage innings so that on a day like today, maybe David Ross can go away from Mark Leiter Jr. or not have Adbert Alzali have to come in for what ends up being uh, a multi-inning, not a save, but would he get the win probably with how those stupid rules work? Um, so yeah, I, you know, look, if you can bring in other guys and play around with them and get something out of them, great. Uh, otherwise, you know, as we've talked about, maybe it's someone like Luke Little, maybe someone else from AAA Iowa, but the more reinforcements, the better, right? Um, yeah. You just have to move on if it doesn't work, which- you got 450 you know, people watching. 450 people, tell a friend, tell a relative. But only 149 tell your likes. That Make that make sense. Come on, guys. Help and us. one thumbs down, don't forget. Um, Always. Hey, the Jedi of Chicago says credit to him Cubs, Cubs are, are 1-0 and 0 0. since he became a diehard. Thanks for signing up to be a diehard. Just a he few hours left, by the way, on that diehard deal. Yes. First time ever, 60 bucks our diehard membership on sale just for a couple more hours, and that is running out. And that, of course, includes the free T-shirt from the CHGO Locker. You get one of our great shirts. Maybe it's this one. Maybe it's Hey Chicago, What Do You Say? Maybe it's Belly Bombs. Perhaps. Maybe it's Sweet Emotion. Maybe. Maybe it's uh, Beautiful and, his and Historic. Got a lot of good shirts there, a lot of dope Maybe merch. Brick by brick. You get to pick whatever you want for free, okay? Right out of the locker. Right now, all those shirts also are on sale for 24 bucks, so that's a deal too. But the membership gets you the Die Hard card. It gets you 20% off our merch all year long. It gets you Ryan's content, and of course, it gets you 20% off our big events, and we've got all the Bears tailgates coming up. Yeah. It's a good time. Good time to join CSGO, Boom. especially with the Cubs playing well. And the Discord. Making the playoff push. And the Bears season starting up with some uh, optimism. Just saying. It's a good time. Good Gonna time. Be sick. 
Going to be sick. Corey's going to buy. Uh, Corey, you are definitely in for two shows on Thursday. On Friday, Friday, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I said in the thing, if Cody will let me, right? I don't know the logistics of it. If they sweep the doubleheader, I'll do the beer bat after the second. Whoa, 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 wait a minute now. Whoa. Shouldn't we have had a breaking news? We should have known <laughs> this is coming. Don't we have a... Well, I didn't... I, you know, I don't know the logistics of it because if Cody does it first, like then we got to go wash it like in the middle of the show. Well, or maybe, yeah, you know, that's maybe what the I intern did. She did that because nobody wants a lip fungus from all this. We don't need... Don't act like I'm like this... <laughs> Like that I have all this disease or what? I'm like, no, I'm a healthy 32 year old male. Post COVID, right? I would bring if I were you, Corey, I would yeah. bring your own beer bat. That's all I'm saying. I don't have my own beer bat, but well, I, I mean, you can go get, get one. one. Go get one. Don't they don't sell them at Wrigley? Out of it. <laughs> don't they sell them at beautiful historic Wrigley Field? They what do. were you doing out there today? But this is a free one, and those are like 30 bucks. Well, that's you true. Don't take. Well, I mean, unless you want to give yes, Tom money to pay for Cody Bellinger. I I give Tom plenty of money to pay for an Cody Bellinger. Let me tell you, um, I got that playoff invoice burning a hole in my email. So I'm gonna right. I didn't have a Rice Krispie treat today. I've never done a beer bat. If they sweep a doubleheader against the Reds in the middle of you know this stretch to start September, yeah, you know we got to answer the call. Just like the pitching staff answered the call these last couple of days, we as podcasters have to answer the call as well. Cody doing the beer bat not enough. We got to one up it. For a doubleheader. Mm-hmm. Well, Big of you. We've already done it with the Rice Krispies. Fernando, the super chat, he was at the ball game. says, mission accomplished. I got the W. Did I miss the chug? You did, Fernando. You did miss the beer bat chug, and you also missed the celebratory Rice Krispie treats, which were first used as rally Rice Krispies rally. treats Rice Krispies. right before the Bellinger game-winning RBI. Another Three of comment. them were taken down right before Belly got that hit. You're right. Another comment, uh, Cody Burton. You have a great name, Cody. Uh, he's just said he's a new diehard, so uh, yes. congratulations. My third favorite Cody. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're Corey's third favorite Cody. Delmendo, Bellinger, Burton. It's very big of you to let me be ahead yeah. of Cody Bellinger because I know how much Cody Bellinger uh, rides on our happiness. So. Yeah, and, <laughs> and by the way, we should point out in the live YouTube chat that the godmother of the CHGO Cubs podcast, Barb, said, please eat something before <laughs> chugging the beer bat. She's worried that poor Cody might get dizzy or throw up. <laughs> so, Thanks, God and, and, and Barb, we are live. We are live. We are live. This show is live. With the Reds looming, people in the chat have told us that they already released Trey Mancini. Oh, so the revenge game so will no not happen. no revenge game. Nope, will not happen. No revenge series from Bummer. Trey Man series. I was looking forward to that one. That would have been fun if he's playing first base. Maybe David Ross just dials up a you know a bunt. Everybody just bunts to first base for you know all, every batter yeah. and see what happens. Uh, somebody in the chat was saying, yeah, Corey said, not Corey Friedman. Corey in the chat says, feel bad for Mancini. I do too. In a way, I, yeah. it, I feel bad for him as a person. I don't feel bad for the Cubs organization because they did the right thing at the right time. And, and I'm proud of them for doing that as an organization. They should be acting like that as a huge market team. They should be willing to eat some money if something doesn't work out. Mancini, everything we saw was that he was a great guy. So yeah. um, I just feel a little bit like that, uh, you know, the Paul Rudd meme from Hot Ones, especially with, you know, you guys like, look at us. Who would have thought? They're nine games over 500 heading into yeah. September, boys. I, know. I, I can't, I mean, like, I can believe it a little bit, but I can't believe it. I mean, you, the, the three of us and Ryan and Jared and Brendan just talked about some awful games last year when CHGO launched, just some terrible games and players that I think we wish we could forget and awesome. huge series against the Brewers. They show up after a total clunker on Monday, nine games over 500. We're talking about like his PCA coming up before, you know, to make sure he's on the playoff roster. I can't believe it. Yeah. Probably the biggest thing that happened last year was Killian's call up. That was about as excited as we got on the CHGO I don't know Cubs about podcast. That. I'm going to tell say... you, like, it was Cody's come a long way. I said the other day, too. Like, he used to get so upset after a loss. Now he just lets it, it's like, Water off a duck's back. He just lets it happen, and he moves uh, on to the next day. Listen, I think the best moment from last year was definitely when Alfonso Soriano came back to Wrigley and wore the hot dad summer shirt. That was number one, and then <laughs> the ice cream socials we had during the blowouts were probably number two. <laughs> the and hey, the second half of the season actually was a good. lot more fun. But now yeah. we found a way that the Cubs can win, and we can still have our sweets with a Rice Krispie treat for a rally treat. Look at us. 
The bad news is there's only like four left in the box. So somebody's going to have to run out to the store. As we sit here right now, Uh the Reds lead the Giants two to one. Um, And then obviously Arizona and the Dodgers play late tonight. The Phillies lost today too. So the Cubs actually gained a game on the wild card. They're three games back, I believe, of the top wild card spot. They're in the second spot right now. Um, So there's that. And obviously, they're three games back in the division. Um, the only bad news I have to report is that the Cardinals won, so I can't send the tweet. But whatever. <laughs> well, Charlie says now that uh, the Phillies and the Brewers have the same record. So, yeah. you know, you're chasing both things. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, better you get home field advantage. But interesting now, it's, you know, sights are set kind of in that same spot. Mm-hmm. Big Dave from the Bulls podcast checking in on us. He's giving us the thumbs up. Yes. And Charlie says it. Soriano wore schmedium to that game. That was not a schmedium. Soriano is just that big now. Yeah. <laughs> he's jacked. <laughs> I mean, he's enormous. Uh, Corey, are you going to stay for the whole show? You want to hang for the show or till Ryan right. gets here? Or what do you want to do? Bum me when Ryan, just... when Ryan gets here. Yeah, I'll hang. All, all right. Well, let's let's uh, talk about some of our friends here at Ray Chevy Dodge Jeep Ram. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? If you are, we've got some great news for you. Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fox Lake has just joined the CHGO team at Ray CDJR. You'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and find unforgettable savings. Right now, during the Make This Summer event at Ray CDJR in Fox Lake, you'll be able to take up to 20% off MSRP and select New 2023 Ram 1500 models. Yeah, maybe you're not thinking about these interest rates. Maybe you think they're too high right now. (laughs) That's not the case at Ray CDJR because right now, through the end of the month, a couple days left, August 31st, you're able to get limited time, 0% financing for 72 months on select models. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, then check out the team at Ray, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram because they are the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray CDJR only in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com today, serving the community since 1963. And let me tell you guys, before I had my Rice Krispies treat that sparked the Cubs win, it was the base of my health that laid the platform for that comeback. Our next partner is the foundation, AG1, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports the whole body health. I drink it literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I was tired of taking so many supplements. I wanted a single solution that supported my entire body and covered my nutritional bases every day. I wanted better gut health. I wanted better energy. I wanted uh, immune system support. I hated taking all the pills and vitamins, and the stuff tastes great too. So I take it first thing in the morning. AG1 helps you build your health foundation first, and a lot of athletes are taking this too right now. One thing in common, they take care of their bodies, just like I do. Huge part that starts with optimizing whole body health. A lot of them also drink AG1, and that's why I'm a huge fan. With every daily serving, I'm setting myself up for success with 75 high-quality Ingredients that give me key daily nutrients, support energy, focus, strength, and clarity. I also like that it costs less than three bucks a day. What a deal. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs for your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash chgo cubs. That's drinkag1.com slash CHGO Cubs, check it out. Oh, man. Woo. Can I read a good stat AG1? for y'all? What'd you say? Can I read a good stat for y'all? Yeah. Yeah. We like stats. Saw it on, uh, saw it on Marquee. Since May 25th, which is when Kyle Hendricks came back, made his mm-hmm. debut, he has the second most starts with three earned runs or less in all of baseball, only behind Blake Snell, who I believe is the only person that has a higher, uh, or excuse me, lower earned run average than Justin Steele. Incredible. I was saying that the other night. I didn't know the exact number. I said he was top two or three, three runs or less since he's been here this season. And that's all I want. I, I don't need what he gave, you know, today you actually needed what he gave you, but normally I don't need uh, six innings, one run. Give me six innings, 
three runs out of Kyle Hendricks. I'm okay with that. Like, if the offense can't do it, then it's that's their problem. That's their fault and, and our loss. But when you take a guy who you weren't even sure was going to be your fifth starter going into the season, and he's giving you three runs or less basically every time out, that is gravy. Mm-hmm. That's gravy all over the mash taters. Yeah. That's Thanksgiving dinner right there. I am getting hungry thinking about it. <laughs> uh, all right, big Cubs win three to two over the Brewers to take the last two games. Luke Stuckmeyer, Cody Delmondo, and Corey Friedman from home, who was at beautiful us. and historic. Uh, Ryan Herrera was is currently at beautiful and historic Wrigley Field, where he will join us after he works the clubhouse, a celebratory clubhouse. But I wanted to point out something I saw this afternoon. The Athletic has their most recent article is from Jim Bowden, former Reds and Nats GM, and he gives out his. Top 50 Major League Baseball prospects. He starts by saying, I don't do this the way everybody does it. I do it with the eye test. It's guys I've seen with video or guys I've seen in person. I'm not going into all the numbers necessarily. This is my evaluation, and it's nothing more than that. So other people are going to have different lists. Top 50 prospects in all of baseball. The Cubs have two in this list. Pete Crow Armstrong at number 17 who we may or may not see as early as, dare I say, Friday. (laughs) We can dream. We can dream. And number 18 on his list, Mm -hmm. number 18, Cade Horton, former first-round pick, 22 years old. And the quote is, I will be surprised if the Cubs don't promote Cade Horton to the majors this season. Wild. Okay. Okay. Friday, there are two guys that will pitch. Jordan Wicks is one, and TBA is the other. Is TBA good? I, <laughs> do you think there's any shot Cade Horton and Wicks pitch those two games? Do you think there's any shot Horton is called up this season? Corey no. waving his head no. I, I mean, Jim Bowden is just- full of baloney. It would be shocking, and I, look, I'll be the one to throw the caveat out there that Jim Bowden, you know, yeah, very <laughs> hit or miss, um, and prob- maybe a reason that he's not uh, working in MLB front offices anymore, but um, they've just been so careful with his arm. You know, you'd have to move him to the 40 man. They've been so careful with his arm. There's just a lot of logistics that would work against that. I think the 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 bigger thing is that he would be surprised if it didn't happen. That like mm-hmm. almost feels like a misprint, shocked. right? He did like, say shocked, but almost. It would be a shocking thing if they did it. Like even if they end up doing it, n- no matter who you are, it's a, a, a super aggressive, like crazy move for the Cubs. Would I love to see it? Like, yeah, that would be amazing. I think we were talking with Brendan earlier, who was like, if Jordan Wicks and Kate Horton swept a double header you're going to have to peel me and Cody off the roof of the CHGO office on Friday night. There's not even enough beer bats in the world to handle the vibes that are going to be coming out of that studio. But (laughs) they have been very careful with him um, in managing his innings and getting him to this status where he is one of the best pitching prospects in baseball. Um, So, uh, yeah, I, I I don't see it, but I, I don't know. Maybe there's something we're all missing, but it just that it would definitely be surprising. It, 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 there's no other word for it. Cody, who's more likely, Horton or PCA on Friday? Or oh. if you had to take a choice, what's going to happen? PCA, Horton, none of the above on Friday. What's your choice? What's going to happen? PCA is going to be here on Friday. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? No, I don't have to imagine. I know he's, it's he's, happening. He's, he's going to be here on Friday. I will be. I I am at a point now where I will be shocked if PCA is not here on Friday. Uh, just based off, I just I just based off what Jed and Carter have kind of hinted at, and this team could use another shot in the arm offensively. This week they've struggled a little bit. Now the Brewers' pitching is pretty good, so take that however you want but they they could they could use a shot in the arm from you know a guy like him and I do think that the defense and the base running could be good for them like could could be a a lightning rod or something you know today would have been great to have PCA on the on the base paths for you know for one of those runs that the Cubs scored you know what I mean um that's why it's different for me it's what we talked about a couple days ago 
for me, the call up of um, Wix was an emergency call up because it's just like Nico Horner. You had no other choices. You, you've got to find somebody that can do it. Yeah. Now, maybe game two is a similar situation. Maybe it's Green, who a lot of people are suggesting might be the guy. I don't know who's going to start game two. We might find out afterwards. We'll ask Ryan if that's been clarified for us yet. But the position player, you can find multiple ways for that position player to influence the game without it stunting their growth, if you will, towards the major leagues. You can have a call-up where a guy is put in for a defense, at the very least, a a pinch runner and a, a defensive replacement for PCA, great outstanding but I don't worry about it stunting his growth at all the guys had five months of being healthy and absolutely crushing it everywhere he's been yeah so a couple at bats at the major league level what's going to help his growth is being around games like today vibes like last night and to and today where and, and frankly even like game one of the series where he learns how bad it hurts to lose a big game in the big leagues when you're in a pennant race, like I want him to feel all of that. Yeah. I, I want him to feel more than winning than losing, but I want him to feel all of that the last month of the season. So for me, PCA being called up as early as Friday, hopefully mm-hmm. that's a, that's a win-win situation. Yeah, I don't know about these two games. Like these are two games where you, those skills are so useful, right? Whether it's yeah. on defense him coming into bunt. I think it was Alex Cohn who was sharing a video like of him bunting in the cage today, like kind of around when Nico was bunting in the majors. Like you get that speed on there. You're playing these tight, razor thin one run games back to back days. Like that's where a player like him is, you know, transformational basically. Uh, but to the the pitching thing, I, I Shane Green makes a lot of sense. His last start was on August 27th. So I think rest wise, depending on when he threw a, you know, side session or a bullpen, Makes sense. I think he went four and two thirds in his last start, five in the start before that, like has been pretty good. I I don't know what we would expect at the major league level, but that one just seems kind of lined up. Um, They've been stretching him out. It just seems like it's going to make the most sense, but Hey, you know, uh, I'd, I'd rather they go the Jim Bowden route. Like I would love to see Kate Horton. That'd be crazy, right? Like a huge (laughs) pitching prospect. That would just be amazing. But I, I, I just don't know how much, how many more bullets he has in the, you know, the cannon this year before they shut him down and get ready for whatever their plan is for him next year. I, and I Corey, believe- just remember some of the greatest minds in baseball were once in the front office, working in the front office. Uh, you, just you, like I'm me. talking yeah. about you, just <laughs> you and Jim Bowden, two of the, right. two of the greatest minds I know. Yes. Okay, right. sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I w- correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the Cubs – uh, didn't they don't they have like three open spots in the 40 man right now uh, I believe so yeah unless yeah. They, I don't the think they three or two the, I think it's three yeah they have three open spots in the 40 man so Bryce like, Gary's not throwing that info at so us right like now. you know to me that's telling so PCA like, Luke Little you know maybe another Jimmy. maybe another reliever you know we'll see but I do think that there will be there will be something happening. I think that's more likely than, um, you know, them getting for say you know Lucas Giolito. A lot of people keep asking about Lucas Giolito in the in the chat. I just don't think he's going to follow the Cubs in the on the waiver wire or whatever they want to call it. I'm call it waiver wire because fantasy football, but you know what I mean. What about Jumbo Luke Little? A lot of people have been saying in the chat they want to see Luke Little in the I bullpen. Just, I just said that, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. that was a guy a lot of people were excited about in Cactus League, and then it just. Mm-hmm. You know, you just kind of been waiting to see when it'll be the right fit. Corey uh, is uh, joined us on the podcast, and very soon Ryan Herrera is going to join us. Uh, I see Ra has a super chat. I don't care how sad it seems. This <laughs> podcast is my social life. Love it. That's Love okay, it, Thanks Ramin. for joining us. That's okay, man. Like we we just vibe here, brother. So thank you for joining, and thanks for the super chat. Thanks for being our friend. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Fernando, I can't believe he did it. Somebody says, please pour some sugar on me. <laughs> and then Barb says, please be careful of the sugar. You may get diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Barb. <laughs> Let us have some fun, Godmother. Come on. Oh, uh, uh, Before we get to our friend Ryan Herrera, Cody, tell us about our friends at Shady Rays. 
Yeah, Shady Rays. I wore them on my way to the office when I was running late this morning. Thank God the sun wasn't in my eyes because of Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair. We've worn durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing much needed support to nonprofit partners across the U.S. through Shady Rays Impact from building Place sets for pediatric cancer, cancer patients to providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others like it now and for years to come. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back exclusively for our listeners listening in the podcast form. If you're in the chat right now, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season, go to ShadyRays.com and use code CHGO for 50% off two pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Adam in the live YouTube chat says, F it, bring up Ferris. <laughs> bring up Ferris, <laughs> bring Jackson up Ferris, Ferris, baby. Wasn't he like 19? <laughs> Nick G loves his Shady Rays Absolutely. for what it's worth. Absolutely. Bring up uh, Ferris. It, Put Matt Shaw at third base on yes. Friday night. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. go. Uh, <laughs> don't forget Die Hard Discount. Just a couple hours left. $60 right now for our Die Hard memberships. First time ever in the history of the Die Hard program. You get the free shirt. You get access to Ryan Herrera's articles. All of them. Everything he's got for you. Plus all our other sports that are covered. So you got Adam Hogue's articles. You got Jay Zawoski writing for you. Uh, Vinny Duber. You name it. So all of our great stuff there. Make sure you check that out. Just a couple hours left on that sale. And you get to be in the Discord where uh, the numbers are going up. And everybody that's been in the chat, we've had four or five people in the chat today say, hey, new diehard member, totally worth it. So please check that out. Real quick, Cody, DraftKings pick of the week for you? What do you oh, got? Oh, yes. Well, if you watch CSGO bets yesterday, we did college football bets for tomorrow. Week one officially starts tomorrow. I can't wait. My hair's all stand up. There's no Cubs game tomorrow, so you know what I'll be doing. I'll be watching a bunch of teenagers slinging the pigskin, baby. Give me the under in Minnesota and Nebraska. You know why? Because it's Big Ten. Number two, because all the Big Ten is is punts and grit, and all they do is play defense, and also the new clock rules means that every time there's a first down, the clock keeps running, like in the NFL. They haven't done that. for. They just changed that in the in, the, in college football this year. The under, 43 and a half, Minnesota and Nebraska tomorrow night. God, I can't wait. Can't wait. Punts, punts, punts galore, baby. <laughs> can't wait. All right. Uh, hey, now the Cubs play the Reds. Ryan is here. Corey's going to switch off. Corey's going to be in studio for two shows. By the way, we're going to have two podcasts for you coming up on Friday. Double the pleasure. So thanks to Corey. <laughs> thanks, Corey. Bye, Corey. Thanks Later. for coming on. Bye. Bye bye. Hello. <laughs> uh, and now here he is, Ryan Herrera Ryan. in a CHGO hoodie, I think. Oh, One yeah. that you can get oh, yeah. at the CHGO locker right now. And if you're a diehard, oh, yeah. you get 20% off that bad boy. Yes. Uh, all right. All right. How about Kyle Hendricks? What was said about uh, the professor after the game? Because around here, we're all pretty impressed. Yeah. And Yes, everyone's very impressed with what Kyle's been able to do this season. Uh, but, you know, asking him, right, like his biggest struggles kind of came around the same time that this, the Cubs went in this rebuild. They traded everyone away like that. The, the the team as a whole started struggling, right? And so just talking to him and asking just kind of what um, it means to be contributing while the while the team is rising and, and competing again. And it's you know, it's a very Kyle answer, right? Basically talking about, you know, we're all going out one day at a time, focusing on like each pitch, focusing on whatever we have to do that day to individually help um, teams win or the, the, the team win. Um, you know, Kyle's never going to like bra brag about himself, but it was a very impressive start today. Um, you know, I don't know that the Brewers lineup like strikes fear in many 
other teams, but they are like one of those pesky lineups that will take advantage of mistakes. And Kyle didn't really make any. I think, you know, he had the one error that did lead to a run, but um, outside of that, he had a clean game. Bullpen was, was pretty good overall. Mark Leiter Jr. struggled there. Um, but yeah, for Kyle to do that, coming off what Steele was able to do last night to get the win. Um, yeah, huge, big game feel and a big game kind of performance from Kyle Hendricks. And, you know, considering the guy started game six of the NLDS in 16 and game seven of the World Series that year, like, you, you kind of expect a guy like Kyle Hendricks to show up when, when the games are on the line and, and things matter. Um, that's what he did today. Six innings, you know, had the one run, but unearned technically. Um, yeah, just a really good performance again. Uh, he's been doing it a lot. Like, you look at the the box scores and stuff, and he's been really good this season. He's had his, a couple clunkers in there, but uh, for the most part, it's like he's given this team a chance to win every single time he goes out. And considering we just didn't know what to expect from him, um, going into when he came back at the end of May, it's been a very nice surprise to just see him kind of look a lot more like his old self. Uh, Ryan, two very important questions. Number one, did David Ross have any follow-up to his pregame stuff where he mentioned Jordan Wick starting game one and TBD for game two, where uh, we're all wondering who's going to start game yeah. two. And follow-up question afterwards would be, did the Cubs in the clubhouse give any credit to the Rally Rice crispy treats that we ate before Bellinger's big hit? Should have if they didn't. Um, um, no, we don't have a starter for game two on Friday. Um, also, I, I didn't. I, I could have mentioned. I didn't. You should have told me that there was something with the Rally Rice crispy treats. I would have. I would have mentioned. It. I don't know. It just happened. Was that you? It just happened. It was. Yeah. I, first, I, it was amazing, Ryan. I said, uh, you know what? Uh -huh. This game is depressing. I'm going to go get a Rice crispy treat, a Rally Rice crispy treat. And then Cody was like, that's a great idea. Cody took two of them down. Next thing we know, we get back to the nice. couch. Boom, Bellinger off the guy's knee. Cubs take the lead. Next thing you know, he's doing a beer bat, and I'm eating another Rice Krispie treat. And we're vibing, and we're hitting 450 viewers. So now they're a thing, and we've talked to the people at Kellogg's. And we're like, listen, mm -hmm. we're right here for you. CHGO brand, Rice Krispie treats. And yeah, we are. I mean, if you didn't know, we're in the belly bar now. That's yeah. where we're at. It's not Studio B. We're calling it the belly bar. Belly okay. Bar. Yeah. Belly bar. I'll make, sure, I'll make sure it'll pass that along. Um, but no, there was no acknowledgement of the rally right. rice crispy treats. All right. Well, all right. Next well, time. maybe next time. <laughs> you, you always have that opportunity next homestand. Uh, how about Bellinger, huh? Like, I mean, yes, yes, it was a, a line drive off the knee, and yesterday it was a ground ball, but that's what this offense needed. The offense was just floundering pretty much all series long. And isn't it funny that the one guy you need to get a big hit or put bat on the ball ends up being Cody Bellinger after I was worried, I'll admit, I was worried about the bunt. <laughs> um, no, yeah. Well, I mean, considering the bunt, like if like I'm not a big I'm not a big proponent of bunts, but that you no, know, Nico doesn't get that down. I think Haps is an inning ending double play, right? Potentially. Yeah. So you never really know how that turns out. It worked out for him in this sense, but Dude, Bellinger has been, and this is like we say at every single show, like he's the guy that comes through in the clutch for this team. He's been getting the big hits all season and, um, yeah, putting the bat on the ball. Like he didn't hit a home run or anything either in the last two days, but it was just getting – yesterday it was a ground ball to the right side that scored the the run, and today it was just hitting <laughs> – yeah, hitting one off the pitcher. A little bit of luck involved, but that's baseball, right? Um, but that's putting the ball in play and, and trying to make things happen. And, um, you see the plate approach. You see, you see that he knows what he needs to get done in that situation, and it works out. And he's been doing that all year. Um, you know, he just kind of continues to talk about just trying to, you know, when asking him how, like how he's able to kind of just keep getting it done night after night, day after day, and he continues to just talk about just you know feeling good having the right mindset at the plate, feeling good at the play, like did the very simple things um, that he continues to say. But if that's just working for him, right, just like keeping a clear mind at the plate, knowing what you got to get done and, and just trying to do the simple things right. I mean, you don't, you don't broke what's not, you don't fix what's not, you don't fix what's not broken, right? Yeah, that's how you say it. Um, but that, yeah, so that's. If it ain't broke, that, don't fix it. Yeah, either way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's so that that's Bellinger's mindset, right? Like go up there and just put the ball in play, try to make some magic happen and, and, and do the right things well, or the small things, right. Um, he's been doing it. Yeah. It, it, I guess I'm, we'll get, we'll talk about who you got in a sec, but, um, 
No, he's yeah. He had the big hit against today. Um, big hit, yeah, big hit today to give the Cubs a very, very big win over the Brewers. Uh, big series win over the Brewers, and I, I this this whole relationship between the Cubs and, and Cody Bellinger has like completely worked out for five months into the season. Now you got all September to go, but um, I, there's no doubt that the Cubs are not regretting signing Bellinger last winter. Man, I I said that they've got to do whatever they can to keep him at this point. You can't build what you've been building this season and let him slip through your fingers and go to the Yankees or whoever might want him. Worse yet, a rival. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, what about Merriweather? Was he? Did he talk after this game? Because like, unsung hero. It, I just can't. I I still can't believe that they picked him up off waivers, like. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> it's like yeah. He, the sixth inning was huge. Just or no, the whatever inning it was. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. It, he <laughs> he came in in a pressure situation again, back to back days, and just shuts it down, man. Like it, the bullpen in general has just been great. I know Leiter struggled today with the walks, couldn't couldn't find the splitter, but Aber, even though he let them tie it, you know he didn't yeah. give up the lead, and then. Shut it down after the Cubs managed to get a run in the bottom half of the eighth. So, it, I, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place here. But yeah. Merriweather specifically, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious if you guys were able to talk to him and just kind of talk about his journey with him because it's, it to me, he's the one that's like I. It's more unbelievable about him than any of them, any of the other ones. No, uh, we didn't talk to him specifically, but uh, you know, I did ask Adbert just what it's been like to watch. Yeah, Merriweather do his thing because. As you mentioned, a guy that got picked up off waivers, I think, from the Blue Jays, right? Like, it's um, a guy that he's not a young rookie type guy. He's been around for a little while, but um, just hadn't found, I think, injuries played a part in that and just a little bit of inconsistency. Um, but now he comes here and, and he's been outside of like really the first outing against the Brewers early in this, like the, his first time pitching this season. He's been like one of the best relievers on this roster. And Adbert. He always talked about, he actually mentioned, said that, um, you know, Julian is, he said that Julian's pretty much one of the biggest reasons that they're even in the position that they're in now, um, being one of the guys that, you know, whatever inning he goes in the sixth inning, seventh inning, eighth inning, he may not be the closer, but he's the guy that comes in, um, whether it's a clean inning or, or a little bit of traffic on the bases when he comes in, like he's able to just get guys out right he's got the high velocity he's got a nice slider it's like um when he's able to do all that stuff he's he's a very hard pitcher to hit and so it's been like whatever situation that david ross or you know has asked him to go into um this season whether you know even today right it wasn't one full clean inning and that was it he had to go out get that second up that second up and um and get the first guy out in the eighth so um, it's been like whatever at whatever David Ross has asked him to do, he's been able to do. And, you know, guys, it's like, like I'm glad you brought him up because it's kind of an unsung hero type of thing with Merriweather where he's not the closer. He's not the star. He may not get all the, the praise or the love from, from people watching, but, um, what he's been able to do this season has been really impressive. I mean, he's, he's just that guy that, that gets it from that starter or, over to Ad Burdell's life for a close, right? If that's the situation, he's the guy that David Ross trusts um, to be that bridge guy to get it to the very end of the game, um, and he's he's performed really well in that situation in that role. Yeah. Oh, our guy Nando with a uh, big alert for us. Fernando. Nando just became Fernando became a CHGO diehard while the show was going on, ready for postseason vibes. Woot. Let's go. Let's go Fernando. Thank you for the CHGO diehard All membership. All those ninety nine super chats are gonna they they you can take a few days off, man. You you became a diehard. And I'm wondering what free mm -hmm. shirt Nando is gonna choose. That is the question. Mm -hmm. What free shirt from the CHGO locker? And now he doesn't have to worry, Ryan. He can read all your stuff. What's coming up uh, tomorrow? Because we got an off day. What do you got brewing for us? Uh, we got some, you know, talking about this game and the, or this series, right. And how big it is. And just kind of going into September now, you know, these last two games felt maybe even bigger than they would have. Like, imagine they get swept in this series. They're what, seven games back in the division going into September. They're three games behind back in the division going into September. Now it's a, it's a different ball game now, just because they were able to win these last two games against the Brewers. You got a month 
just trying to preview that preview the, you know, who may be those September call-ups. Um, yeah, it's got, got some stuff brewing, uh, as this team, you know, they got an off day tomorrow and they go to Cincinnati for, for four games in three days. So got some stuff cooking, but, um, yeah, just kind of going into September and trying to look at what that last month could be like for the Cubs, I think is kind of the focus. And if you didn't see, you did write about Justin Steele. So if you want to read about Justin Steele, go read it. Big of me to promote Ryan Herrera. Working on the shirt, Insane. balls of steel as we speak. <laughs> uh, Barb also, the godmother of the CHGO podcast, wants us to know that she made turkey meatballs <laughs> and shared them with the dogs next door. Uh, God, so, Barb. Godmother. So, God damn it, thanks for Barb. Sh- and as always, thanks for sharing, Barb. <laughs> thanks, Barb. I uh, appreciate it so speaking much. Speaking of really sharing, cool. I want to share with you guys about, before we get to who you got, FOCO. Our great friends at FOCO get fitted out with the best sports gear around. Hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, everything in between. Baseball season means Aloha shirts, straw hats, polos, maybe a hoodie for a playoff game coming up. Set decorations often provided by our friends at FOCO. They give us a lot of great stuff. Check out FOCO.com. Click the link in the description below for all non-presale items. Make sure you use the promo code CHGO. They'll give you 10% off. All right, time for who you got. We had a lot of picks today. We've picked up some diehard members throughout the show. We picked up a series win for the Cubs. Who's picking up the who you got W? Well, my guy hit three really hard balls into gloves, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That's about it. And Ryan took the guy guy, that I've been taking. Ryan's guy hit one off the wall nice and hard. Yeah, RBI. My guy, he stole my bit. My guy had the game winning Mm hit. Just like he did last last night. Just like he did last night (laughs) for Ryan. So I would say Nico had some good defense. We're in the belly bar. Just remember, we're in the belly bar. I think half I think half took this one, in my opinion. He did. No, he no. did. What did he drove in the? Was it one or two runs? It was one run. He got a he double off the wall. Double he off drove, should have been two. He drove in one. He didn't drive in the winning run. That's true. Yeah, he drove in on, the Mike. winning run, just like we, last night. The, the The ball he hit today was better than the one he hit yesterday for the RBI that won the game. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it was. This was a no, miss. He smoked it. What was the exit philo? Five hundred. <laughs> Sean says Luke wins again. It, it Rhonda was, says belly. It was 95.9 with a 370 expected batting average. And of the three people currently on the podcast, Never. only two of us had Rally Rice Krispies treats. I had Rally uh, cookies and brownies in the press box. So Ooh, I'm brownies. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I don't All right, know. fine. You can have it. You can All take right, thanks. It. Uh, I was going to sit here and wait. I would sit and wait for traffic if I had to. Uh, thanks to everybody that joined for the CHGO Cubs podcast. We're off tomorrow because there is no game tomorrow, but we're here for two podcasts, two hour long shows on Friday. Yes. We're going to be here after the game one and after game two. Correct. At least that's the current plan, but we know we're going to provide two hours of podcasts. Right. Like there's no pregame on Friday. There won't be. We currently we don't believe there's a pregame on Friday. We think we're going to do postgame for both shows. Yes. So Barb, we will be live twice on Friday. Live twice, but not on Thursday. Big of us on a Friday for a road game. Big of us. Mm, It is big of us. We've been off every Friday road game all season, but then Jake and Kevin, our bosses, were like, "Guys, we need you here because you guys are bringing in the most views right now." I'll Don't t- let the facts get in the way of a good story. I'll tell you what's what's crucial. Uh, we're we're sitting here on a Wednesday afternoon, mm-hmm. and since the show started, we haven't had less than three hundred forty people in the live chat. That's we were that's we were like nice. four fifty and up and nice. kept going on and on. As Sean says, "What about an emergency pod if PCA is called up?" Well, let's well wait for it to happen. If that could happen. happen. Yeah. That could happen, and if it's Horton, then we will definitely do one. Right. Uh, one more thing. I was reading the chat while Ryan and you were kind of chatting it up. And there's a guy, his name is Eric, and he kind of gave his explanation on why he thinks the Cubs shouldn't re-sign uh, Bellinger. And he basically says along the lines of it feeling like another Jason Hayward contract. And the only thing I have to say is that, well, the Cubs gave Dansby Swanson a seven-year contract worth almost the same money and that was his as best year. Jason Hayward. And he's having... He's had an all-star season. 
just can't look at these contracts as if they're like the ones that didn't work out. Cody Bellinger belongs on this team long term. I don't care about the outfield prospects. You just don't know what any of them are going to be. PCA, yeah, I'm high on them. Okay. Alcantara, I'm high on them. You, uh, Eric, I saw you talking a lot about Canario. Yeah, he looks great, but he, like he was hurt. He, he'd probably be on this team right now, honestly, if he didn't get hurt this year, or the Cubs would have traded him in the offseason. But Cody Bellinger is a proven commodity. Proven commodity. One put, MVP. He's literally put himself in the MVP race this year. He's not going to win it, but he's literally at least put himself in the conversation. You got to you gotta go with guys that have proven something. And it's not like he's 35. He's literally 28. This guy belongs in this team long term. Well, in his he, defense, could it go wrong? Yes. Yes, it could go wrong. It does go wrong any for teams. Can. And, but that's right, Ryan. Any contract can to any team. It can happen. And the what he has shown you, the way he's fit this season, the positions that he can play for you. Yes. And a left-handed bat, a power-hitting left-handed bat, you know how valuable that is in baseball right now? Yeah. Very, very valuable. And so that's why whoever does sign him, hopefully it's the Cubs, We'll pay a penny for him, right? Yeah, I also think that. I also think you you know you're not guessing, right? Like Jason Hayward went to the Cubs, but from different organizations, hadn't been with the Cubs yet, and went into an organ. They weren't able to to get him figured out. You you brought in Cody Bell. You have you have now going on a year, a full season of knowing how Cody Bellinger functions in your system and your organization, and obviously that's proven to be successful. I think that's the guy. I think that's the difference between him and, and where Hayward was. It's like, yes, mate, the contract may not work out. The contract, you know, who knows what happens if you give him that same contract to, to Bellinger. You know, you never know what the outcome is going to be. But I think I would rather bet on a guy that we have, you know, if I'm the Cubs that I've that I've seen for the entire season, seen him have success in in our system. I think that's the guy that I would want to bet on if I'm them, if I'm Jed, if I'm Carter, if I'm whoever it is. That's the guy I'm looking at. Is like, okay, this is the guy I trust. Um, is going to live up to the contract that we're, we're giving him. Yeah. Agreed. All right, Cubs Reds coming up on Friday. We'll see you twice then. Until then, thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast. Make sure you hit the like button on the way out, and don't forget, series win, so fly the W. Top two seeds, not even top three. We talk about top two, we lock them in. Mm-hmm.